All right, tonight we're gonna to talk about Polaroid Spectrafilm, why it was awesome, why I'm gonna miss it, and why I had to go. So for those of you who may not know what Polaroid Spectra was, it was a film format introduced in the 90s that was kind of the same film as 600, but just cut a little wider. Um, the main difference, the actual chemistry of the film was the same. The main difference was just the frame, was just a hair wider um, compared to just classic 600 Polaroid that we know and love. But what was unique about it was the cameras that they developed for the format. And that is what ultimately made it one of the best formats to shoot with for many years. Polaroid Spectra went by a ton of different names. It was called Image, it was called Type 1200, it was called Spectra. And it kind of reflected the fact that Polaroid never really knew what to do with it, but it did find a niche in professional applications. And when I used to scour flea markets and use camera shops for gear, I would often find things like VHS tapes about how to use a Polaroid Spectra camera to like take pictures of evidence. Uh, and all sorts of weird stuff like that. It was used, there was all sorts of like really specialty cameras made for it for like industrial applications. So as many of you know, in 2008, Polaroid, the old Polaroid, officially discontinued all film. That included SX-70, that included Polaroid 600 and Spectra. And then the Impossible Project showed up and they started making film for all these different formats. And I was really impressed at the time that they made film for Spectra. They didn't have to. They were, you know, they had a big, tall task ahead of them of making film that no longer existed for all these old cameras. But they did. They made PZ, was what originally was called, and eventually just became film for Spectra. Um, and it survived the initial possible project becoming Polaroid Originals. But it did not survive the transition from Polaroid Originals to just Polaroid again. Polaroid has two major types of cameras. You have the classic folding SX-70 type that eventually became the, they grafted a bunch of extra things on like the autofocus and a flash bar and it became the 680 SLR, which is my favorite camera as a holy grail of all Polaroid formats. You have these SLRs that are just amazing cameras, but they're super expensive. They were expensive when they came out. They were some of the most expensive cameras ever made. And then on the other end, you just had tons of cheap plastic consumer cameras. This is the Impulse AF, which I love. It's one of the best uh, plastic 600 cameras out there, but they're just cheap pieces of plastic. And a lot of them didn't even have autofocus. This one did, but there were no controls. You couldn't turn the flash off. They were just made to point and shoot, and they were super simple. So there really wasn't anything in between these super cheap 600 plastic cameras and the super expensive luxury folding cameras, except for Polaroid Spectra. And so when I was starting out many years ago shooting film, I didn't, I couldn't afford the super expensive, I couldn't spend $600 on a folding camera that might not even work. Uh, but I could spend $20 on a Spectra camera. And so Spectra system cameras, and they made a few variants, I still have frog tongue, or not frog tongue, a little shield attached to this one when I used to shoot it. Um, Spectra cameras fell right in between in the sweet spot where they were plastic cameras, but they folded up ever so slightly. They were still range finders, so you weren't looking through the lens like in the super expensive SLRs. But they had a bunch of extra features that were critical to getting like a really good image. And their basic features of a camera, but in Polaroid land, they were rare. So the first one was any camera that had autofocus, there was actually a readout in the viewfinder that would tell you how many feet it was focusing to. And that was awesome because you could tell with that, like, is the camera focusing on my subject in the foreground or is it focusing to infinity just off somewhere and just totally missed the subject. And Polaroid expense, Polaroid film is always been expensive. It's more expensive now, obviously, even with the Impossible Project new Polaroid. So you want to make sure that every image, you know, works. You don't, it's so frustrating and so expensive when each image costs like a dollar, two dollars, three dollars to get, you know, the autofocus just missed it. And even with like the, a, the Impulse AF, which I love, there's no way of knowing what the fo autofocus is doing. But with Spectra cameras, like the, the Spectra AF, 
and the spectra system, you could actually tell what it was doing, just like the SLR. Um, and then even better, there were all sorts of other controls in the back. You could turn the beep on and off, which is crazy. Um, obviously you can turn autofocus on and off or you just lock it into infinity focus if you're doing like landscapes and stuff. You could turn the flash on and off, which was huge. I used to have to tape, when I was using just cheap 600 cameras, I would just tape like paper and plastic over the flash if I didn't want to use it. Um, especially when I was outside and I just didn't want that extra like, you know, where she's shooting through a window or something where flash just isn't needed. Uh, it's really hard to just get around that, but this actually let you turn it on and off, which was great. Um, they made cheaper variants. Um, you had to keep an eye out for like that looked exactly the same. Like this one, the, I think this was, yeah, 1200i and it didn't have any of those controls, but it was still a good camera. So the cameras themselves were awesome and they were really cheap, which was great. Um, my bread and butter of my website for many years was like, telling people about these cameras because just as a photographic tool, they were awesome. You could just, you know, plonk this into your backpack, go out and shoot for a day. Um, a lot of my favorite images that I got with Spectra cameras were because, you know, I wasn't scared of having it in my backpack when I would go out into, you know, a foggy, rainy day because, you know, it was just a plastic camera and it, it wasn't some sort of like delicate, perfect machine like these cameras are where you really don't want to screw those up. So we've been talking about the camera. So what else was awesome about Spectra? Well, I've mentioned it briefly, but the film was really good. And it also had some weird quirks. Like Polaroid did some things with Spectra that they didn't do with any other formats. And I'm, I'm to this day not really sure why, but their basic film, uh, which I was lucky enough to shoot, is the same chemistry, same everything as 600. It was just, you know, a little bit wider, you know, slightly in you know, different shape but essentially the same color chemistry, everything of vintage Polaroid film. Um, but they also have this variant called soft tone. And when Polaroid went out of business and then the Impossible Project was just selling off film willy nilly, the last film that they still had that you could get was soft tone. Cause it was this really eccentric, weird format. And what it did, it created really yellow, images that had a really low contrast and created really cool effects. It was difficult to scan because the yellow, when you really get into it, it's kind of just splotches of yellow. Uh, it almost looked like there was something wrong with it, but I got some awesome results from that. And that was a blast to shoot. And it was a time when before the impossible project was making all sorts of crazy films, it was one of the few like experimental formats other than, you know, Obviously, like Time Zero was amazing, SX-70 format, but um, yeah, that was a really cool, unique thing about Spectra that was fun to use. Now, when the Impossible Project started making films, uh, obviously you had PZ, and I was shooting, you know, I shot primarily on Spectra instead of 600 because I didn't have folding SLR cameras at the time. And then, you know, when Impossible Project became Polaroid originals, they kept making film. And that gets us to where Spectra started to kind of fall apart. And it's a, it's weird to this day, I'm not really sure what happened. It's not Polaroid originals, Polaroid's fault. And I totally understand why they've stopped making film for Spectra cameras. Basically, Around 2017 or so, I have a lot of Spectra cameras. And I have them from, you know, relatively newer ones and some of the very first ones ever made. And almost simultaneously, they all started to fail on me. Uh, the film would get stuck in the rollers and when it eject right, the camera would kind of just get jammed up and I was constantly fighting the cameras. I was ruining a lot of film and I kind of moved away from using Spectra because I was just having terrible results. And I thought that maybe there was something wrong with the film, but it seemed, because it would seem weird that all my cameras would fail simultaneously. And I had never had any problem like that before. So I moved on to 600 type films and I noticed that Polaroid Originals would just kind of stop selling 
Spectra for months at a time, and at one point it seemed like it was never coming back. And it came back briefly, and I tested it. I, if you read my Ultimate Polaroid Camera Shootout, I noticed that I was having flare and light sensitivity issues with the Spectra film that wasn't in the 600, which kind of suggested that maybe they had different chemistry. And there was a lot of weird stuff going on. Well, Polaroid Originals released a statement that was basically saying that there's something going wrong with all Spectra cameras kind of simultaneously. I don't know if this is a case of, you know, planned, like Polaroid was planning for all these cameras kind of fail at the same time, or there's some sort of like circuitry issue that is in common to a lot of these cameras, but uh, I experienced it. Polaroid originals kind of reported it in the same way that I was experiencing it, but these cameras just kind of all started to fail. And the best part of shooting, you know, Spectra was the cameras. Um, yeah, I really don't know. I'm not, you know, someone smarter than me probably has taken these cameras apart and kind of can figure out what went wrong. Uh, but yeah, it's a huge bummer. It kind of overnight, the format was done. I stopped shooting it because even now I have a few packs left and it, you know, it just doesn't work. The camera gets jammed and I've tried almost every camera I have. I have upwards of 10 Spectra cameras and they've all kind of universally failed in the same way, um, which is really crazy. Cause like I said, they were all built in different times and for them to kind of fail around the same few years makes me a little nervous. I'm hoping that that's not a sign of things to come for 600 and folding and all that, um, but you never know. So that about wraps it up. Polaroid Spectra is kind of just figment of our dreams now. I don't think it's ever gonna come back. The cameras don't work. Polaroid is not making new cameras, like the iType all follows the 600. So there's really no prospect of Spectra ever coming back, which kind of just puts into perspective that if you shoot film and you like a format, just go out there and shoot it as much as you can while you can, because it might not be around in a few years. You know, all these cameras and films and everything require on these huge supply chains of, you know, chemicals and producers. And, you know, it's not unrealistic to think that films days are numbered. There's probably always going to be some variant of 35 millimeter out there. There's probably always going to be some variant of maybe Fuji Instax or something. But even then, like if there's one chemical producer in Europe that shuts down, which almost happened recently, a lot of the stuff just goes away. There's not a big enough consumer demand to keep really niche things like Polaroid Spectra at the end of the day, still in business. But I had a blast shooting it. I loved my time with it. It was one of the things that got me through my, you know, years that I didn't have the really expensive Polaroid equipment. And I still love the images that I got from it. I'm glad that I got the chance to shoot with it. You know, when there was still original Polaroid, I got, I'm glad that I got to shoot all the crazy impossible project experiments while they were still kind of figuring out what was going on. And I miss a lot of those formats. I wish I could still shoot them, but they don't exist. So, you know, I just have to find the next thing and just, you know, enjoy what I got. So, yeah, so that's Polaroid Spectra system. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video and happy shooting.